Welcome to the tutorial on Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover the float box macro. So the float box macro is very similar to the box macro that we saw in a previous video. When we worked with the box macro, we had an X, the X to find the spot, where we had the X to find its position horizontally. The float box macro is very similar, except it has an X position or X position and a Y position. The X marks the spot and the Y marks the spot. The X is horizontal and the Y is vertical. Now the float box macro is very different than its sister macro, the box. The box macro was positioned within a passage as it appeared. When we encountered the box macro was where it would be positioned horizontally. Float box macro is a little different. Float box macro has free range of the entire web page instead of just the passage. And so we can float it wherever we want it within a page. So let's look at this. So as I mentioned, when we work with the float box macro, we have X marks a spot, similar to its sister, the box macro, but we also have Y marks a spot. So it has X and Y. Now float box is again a little bit different because it floats around the page, not just the passage. So X and Y are not just the default positions, they are the upper left hand side of the page itself. Similarly down here, the equal signs to find how we're dividing up horizontal space and how we're dividing up vertical space. So this float box will be in the middle third along horizontal and the middle third along vertical. And again, that's not for the passage, that's for the entire page. So let's look at this to see how this place. So I'm going to go ahead and build and play. And this is way up here because it's taking up the entire page that I'm looking at right here instead of just the section of the passage. So notice this is centered right here in the third and third right here. And if we wanted more, we just have to extend out here. But notice this is way up here. Whereas again, the float box is different than the box macro. The box macro when countered in a passage will be positioned horizontally within that passage. Here, float box is floating on the page, not the passage. So a very important distinction. So things can get pretty silly when we work with the float box macro. So again, box macro positioned horizontally as it is encountered within the passage content Float boxes, they float, hence their name. So we can create some very strange effects. So notice this right here. This will be the upper left. Notice I'm using multiple equal signs to subdivide the horizontal space and the vertical space. And I'm pushing this to the lower right, again, subdividing this out. And this will be the very center subdivided this way. This will look a little weird. So let's go ahead and change the start over here to example two, build and play. This is what this looks like using the float box. Again, they float around each other. This is up here in the upper left. This is way down here in the lower right. This is in the very center positioned within the columns we defined. And this is the text that was initially at the top of the passage. So let's return to just look at this. The passage started like this which is correct, That's this is within the passage space right here. And then it encountered upper left, which it stuck up here. And then it encountered lower right, which it stuck way down here. And then it encountered center, which it put right in the center. But notice center appeared third, but is over here, left is up here and right is down here. So float box, again, allows us to define a box, a subsection, similar to what we saw with the box macro However, hence its title, it floats around. So if we want to get a lot more creative about how we want to position things as subsections of a page or a passage, Floatbox really gives us that opportunity. Similar to what Box does as well, but Floatbox extends that by floating within the page itself. So notice we want things extended way up in the upper left or the center or the lower right. Floatbox allows us to do that. We just define its position, again, subdividing using the equal sign that we've seen with alignment, that we've seen with columns, that we previously saw with a sister macro box, now applied to float box, using X marks a spot and Y marks a spot, X for horizontal, Y for vertical. Again, keeping in mind that the position starts in the upper left-hand corner. That's something inherited from web browsers itself, extended into Harlow. 
and we can position things however we want, keeping that in mind. So float boxes are a very powerful tool now in our increasing toolbox within Harlow, allowing us to float a various subsection, a box, within the entire page outside of this space and a passage is normally defined in within Harlow. So instead of our text being kind of right here, we could put it the upper left and lower right and extend it all over the place within here as a floating box within the page, a subsection within our content, within our stories in Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.